Ah, another snake finding day. We took a nice long bike ride down that great big slope, and off they go out into the wilderness to set off on their adventure today, while I sit and think about what I'm going to do. So I'm thinking about starting a new channel, just leaving my old channel the way it is, and just having this channel just be what I do, what I'm about, who I am, just to have some way to throw out some thoughts out there. Pretty soon my kids will both be in college and I'll be having my own life again. Time to think about what the heck happened for the past 20 years. Charting a new course forward, thinking about the past, where we came from, where we are, where we're going. Talking about, you know, what's happened the last 20 years or so while we're raising these kids. Kind of forgetting about ourselves and thinking about other things. For me, one of the more interesting aspects of each one of these trips is to come to this little abandoned, burned down ranch of yesteryear. I'm guessing 1950s, 1960s, I don't know. I should check out the history on it. And I just like to sit here and evaluate so much as left behind and try to figure out what any of it is, what it meant, what it was all about. So I'll just take a seat here. Oh, look at my space heater that I left up on that table. I got blown down. Oh, some cold mornings I like to sit here and just turn it on and just kind of warm up for a little while while they're going around looking for snakes and kind of sit here and look out at the background and just think for a little while. Ah, man, this thing just doesn't work as well as it used to in the olden days. Could take a bath over there in that tub. I haven't, uh, haven't tried that yet. I sit around here and I analyze uh, huh, how long does it take for a non-galvanized nail to rust through sitting on concrete. You know, trying to figure out, I wonder when this place burned down. I'm trying to figure out what everything is. Now this here, I would say this is more, more interesting to me. Um, I believe this is some kind of a pillar thing that came off. And of course the foundation and the metal parts. You know, all the metal parts, the roof, anything that wouldn't rot or burn. It's all that's left. There's the panels of the roof. Five rattlers today and ten gopher snakes. So I like to play guess it. So I'm thinking, well, that's a garage door spring. So this must be a foundation of a garage. It must have a garage door. It didn't go far. Some of the wood's still there. For it. Oh, look at this. I don't know what that is. Oh, here's some of the metal sheets from the roof. little drinking trough there. So this was a main area by the home. I'm assuming that that's the home. Every day I come out here I find something new. And back in the old days they used to use metal for the wires. Sometimes they just have wires now and no metal. Another big galvanized metal drinking trough. We flipped it later on and there was a bunny under there. Come out here sometimes there'll be snakes underneath some of these. Yay! One of the things I like over the years is finding different materials and seeing how they degrade. Obviously ceramic will last a long time. There's a snap off of a jacket or something. Uh, I'm probably going to be here a while. I probably shouldn't leave the heater on while I'm walking around. Could start another fire. That wouldn't be good. There's so much to burn. Yeah, I built a cabin one time. I know what those are. Those are to bolt the sill plates down. They go down into the cement when it's wet, and then they go over like an L bracket. Keep the strong winds from making the foundation come loose from the building. Everything's bolted down to the sill plate, and the sill plate's bolted down to the foundation. I love how all the nails just fill out of the wood when it burnt and just fell down where they are. <laughs> I mean, you could see this stuff anywhere you go where there's lots of fires, but this is just some place that I come all the time and just end up coming here. There's a brake drum. That's probably a gate hinge or something like that. I don't know what that is. I try to figure out well, what could it be. I'm thinking something goes in there. Maybe feed or hay or something like that. And it holds it in there somehow. And things can get in there. Maybe like chickens or something like that. But they can't go tearing it all up. Wait a minute, what's this say? Purina! Oh, we know what that is. So yeah, that's probably what it is. Oh, feed line. Okay. 
So something comes along there. It's a feed line of some kind. I don't know what that is. Interesting though. So it's nice when you find out what something is, you figure it out, and you wonder how close were you when you were guessing. It's the mark of the driveway entrance. There were two of these poles, one of them fell over. I was gonna write it up, but ah, eh, just for fun. Anyway, this is one of the driveway entrances. There used to be a road here. And if you go up here, I think there was a place, yeah, there it is up there. Or well, there was some, I think some loading was done up there. Oh, what's all this? I'm not sure. Oh, there's a water heater. Man, there's everything out. There's a range. Oh, I could, I could use a new replacement range. I, I need a gas one though. I think that's probably uh, electric. I don't know how they get electric out here, but I guess they probably did. Maybe they did have gas. I don't know. Man, they got everything here but the kitchen sink. Oh, they got the bathroom sink though. That's an exhaust manifold. Uh, probably a tractor or something. Yeah. Let's see here. Hmm. What is that? Looks like it's covered in fabric of some kind. That's probably part off the hot water heater. So there's the hot water heater. Wow. You know, it's funny. I've never seen this before. For some reason, I notice things every time I come. It's always different. Oh, maybe that is a gas stove. Let's see what that is over there. That's a collector's item there. Yeah. I don't know what that. It looks like it is a gas stove. Yep. Sure enough, it's got. Looks like the gas lines underneath so yep it must have had a propane tank out here or something like that that's the stove opening door it looks like maybe but somebody's taking the time to line up all these rocks it must differentiate a marking line of some kind for the property i think i'll head back to the homestead over there see what's going on oh on my way over i see what this is so there's the road or the driveway and then this is a pathway a pathway up to the house probably and that must have been the house because there's a hot water heater and their sink was up there and the range so maybe that other area over there wasn't a homestead at all maybe that was a I don't know, maybe it was another home maybe it was modular different people lived in different places that does have a bathtub over there so maybe it was a home boy it's a long way to run hot water though yeah it must have been lonely out here unless you had some hands-on help you a lot of peace. What do people do with a lot of peace? They probably think. I don't know. I got a lot of peace. I spend the day in the shop, in my quiet little area. I do a lot of thinking. Maybe a book or two out here, maybe? Maybe there's no time for that. I don't know how much uh, work they did. Obviously, making the place took a lot of effort. The question begs to be answered. What on earth is all that stuff? And why is it all there? It doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason. Hey, look at that. That's just wound up all by itself. I mean, I could see this whole thing just picked up, put in some artsy-fartsy museum up in New York instead of that banana. You know, it would take a lot of work, you know. The banana was a lot easier. But this would last. People go, whoa, how did you make that? Where'd you get all that wire? How'd you age it so well like that? That's incredible. You know, and you gotta imagine a white wall and it'd be up vertical, you know? Yeah, it would outdo that banana with duct tape, hands down. The winds like we had today. What'll happen is all the stuff will burn out. And something like this, it's like a major beam or something like this, it won't burn through because the stuff around it will burn off. And there's not enough to get this all the way to the to burn through. So it stays. Tin roof parts look pretty flimsy and they deteriorate as far as being torn apart. But they don't rust out like the uh, sheet metal. I like looking at tin. Whenever it goes through heat, it gets little wrinkle patterns and stuff like that where it starts to melt. Yeah, they got these 55 gallon, yeah, it's not quite 50, but it's maybe 45 gallon drum there. It's driving me crazy today. Everything's just a crazy, crazy place out here today, comparatively to how quiet it normally is out here. Not good for video, but hey, I gotta have something to do while they're out there doing their stuff. Now that could hang on an art wall somewhere. See, this is what a 70 year old bathtub looks like when it's left out in the wilderness. You know, there's something to be said for that. 
Yeah, they need a cleanup crew out here. You, you couldn't, you couldn't make one of those. You gotta, you gotta have nature made. Oh, what's this? Oh, you know what that is? That's a thing that can make a door go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then kind of close up like those cowboy saloon doors. You know, they open up and then they go back. Why'd they have those? Why on earth did they have those? They couldn't keep the dirt, the dust out. They couldn't keep anybody out. It gave somebody, I guess, a sense of they're leaving the range and they're going into a civilized place. Just the fact the doors were there probably gave them that feeling. Just thinking about this crazy place out here in the wilderness by myself. Thinking about what it was like here. You should see it in the morning. Golden light. Yeah, still nice though. Oh well. Whoa, nice. Who needs restoration hardware? You want a sliding barn door? Just grab one of these, put yourself a little track up on the wall, and you're set. Yeah, this guy. Look at this. Yeah, the same problem with his tires as I had with my big wheel. He'd ride it until it split down the middle. Right. Here's the other side of it over here. Oh yeah, there's the propane tank. A little ways away from the house. You know, the fires come through here. You know, I don't know if that could explode or not. It's a, <laughs> a nice lounge chair. Everything gone but the aluminum. The fires move so fast, a lot of times they just don't melt or burn up everything. They move on and the fuel's gone. So sometimes one gets stuck in an area where there's maybe a stump or something like that. And it burns a little longer and then it melts. But then when it's sticking outside of that area, it's okay. There's another one of those markers. My thought would be that these rings are something to hold wood together in a circular fashion, probably a water type of thing. That's probably the bottom of the tank, I imagine. Those lines are probably the impression from the foundation, from the weight of the water. An engine, motor type of thing here. Yeah, I found the family automobile. The latest in modern day beds. Oh, here's something I haven't seen before out here. A TV antenna. Ah, so close. All I need is a couple pieces of wood, a tire, and some kind of a bucket to go on top, and I'd have myself a really handy wheelbarrow. I know I saw a bucket around here somewhere. Where did it go? As we get ready to conclude our expedition, head on down the way, biking back. Before we headed back up the mountain, we stopped to look at a bobcat that was killed by coyotes. There's a den nearby. I've been out here for four or five hours. Pretty soon we'll be spending more time on our own, so might as well take the time now to have some of these experiences.